and the dissection of the perineum, which is the outlet to the pelvis, we need to begin by orienting to the osteology and the ligaments of that region. Here you're looking at the inlet to the bony pelvis, and when we look at the outlet, and turn this over so that you're looking at the external surface. The following key landmarks need to keep in mind. Posteriorly, the tip of the sacrum or the coccyx. Off laterally on both sides would be the ischial tuberosities. And then anteriorly is the pubic symphysis down here. So what the other important bony landmarks would be this bar of bone that runs from the pubic bone back to the ischial tuberosity called the ischial pubic ramus. And there'll be two of those. And then a ligamentous structure that spans from the ischial tuberosity to the sacrum is logically called the sacral tuberous ligament. We have one in place here in red. The other one would sit like this on the other side. So what you can define the perineum or the outlet to the pelvis is a roughly diamond-shaped area bounded by sacrum, ischial tuberosity, ischial pubic rami, pubic symphysis, and the right and left sacral tuberous ligaments. Now what we're going to do is look at a little of the external genitalia of the perineum. To do that, we need to define, subdivide the perineum, which I just outlined for you, the diamond-shaped area, into two triangles. An anterior triangle that is formed by an imaginary line across the ischial tuberosities, and the forward triangle is the urogenital triangle. Posterior to that is the anal triangle and we'll look at the external genitalia associated with the urogenital triangle next. To look at the osteology and the orientation of the next cadaver specimen and just rotate this around in this position, so sac uh, pubic symphysis here, ischial pubic rami going this way and the ischial tuberosities here. So this is the urogenital triangle. Here looking at the external genitalia in the male, penis in the midline, the anterior, lower anterior abdominal wall was cut away at about this point. Portion of a scrotum and the spermatic cord feeding down into that on this side. Okay. And on the distal end of the penis, the glands and the foreskin that you can see here. And what I'm going to do is transect the shaft of the penis so we can identify some of the erectile tissue that comprises the a body and root of the penis so that we can trace those um, more distally from their origin. Having transected the penis in a cross-sectional profile, you can see the erectile tissue. Here's one cylindrical body, the corpus cavernosus on the right, corpus cavernosus on the left, and then down below in the midline, a single corpus spongiosum. And that will have the penile urethra coursing through the corpus spongiosum. Surrounding the erectile tissue will be a thick white membrane, the tunica albuginea. What we're going to do is trace these erectile tissues and the urethra from their origin in the future demonstrations of the perineal dissection here. In looking at the following structures uh, within the urogenital triangle, we talked about the erectile tissue forming the shaft of the penis. We're now discussing their origin and their continuity in a more posterior direction. For example, in this area, we see a ridge of tissue that I'm outlining with the probe that is actually covered by soft tissue, a skeletal muscle. And then the forceps are holding in the midline another ridge or bulging tissue, which is part of the erectile tissue. The forceps are holding the bulb of the penis and the associated skeletal muscle, and the bulb of the penis would be continuous with the corpus, or is part of and continuous with the corpus spongiosum. The tissue that you see over towards the side of the urogenital triangle and is literally attached to the bony ischiopubic ramus down in here is the cruce of the penis, which is part erectile tissue, continuity with the corpus cavernosus, and partly skeletal muscle. And you can see some of the skeletal muscle fibers associated with this left cruce. The muscle is the ischiocavernosus muscle covering the cruce of the penis. And the bulbospongiosus muscle is the other skeletal muscle covering the bulb of the penis. The area in between the two structures that I just pointed out, the bulb and the cruise, is pointing back into a deeper dissection of the urogenital triangle. And I'm literally now touching the urogenital membrane that I will define and show you in a clearer specimen in a minute.
In this other specimen, we can actually get a very good look at the urogenital diaphragm, which is a triangularly shaped sheet-like skeletal muscle. Over here is the ischiopubic ramus on the left, over here the ischiopubic ramus on the right, and in this vicinity is the inferior margin of the pubic symphysis. So all of this tissue right in here comprises the skeletal muscle of the urogenital diaphragm, and you can actually see an opening here where the urethra is piercing through the urogenital diaphragm to enter the bulb of the penis that was sitting in the previous specimen, just anterior superficial to this dissection. So the UG diaphragm is comprised largely of circular muscle fibers, the sphincter urethra muscle that has voluntary control of micturition, and a few fibers towards the back that are difficult to identify that are called the deep transverse perineus muscles. We're looking at the dorsum of the cadaver. This is the sacrum and the uh, coccyx down in this region. The anal canal, anal opening is right here. The ischiopubic ramus is right here. And this is the gluteal region with many of the gluteal muscles removed. You can see piriformis and you can see obturator internus coming through. This is a key landmark for this orientation. This is a ligament, the sacrotuberous ligament. So the pudendal nerve, which is the primary nerve innervating structures of the perineum, comes out of the pelvic cavity just adjacent to the piriformis muscle and is just momentarily in the gluteal region right here. It then turns a corner going in the direction of the probe through an opening that is formed by the sacrotuberous ligament above that you can see and the sacrospinous ligament deeper and shorter that you really cannot see in this specimen. And the space between those two ligaments is called the lesser sciatic notch. Pudendal nerve and its accompanying internal pudendal artery pass through the lesser sciatic notch to then enter the perineum. More specifically, since they're entering the posterior part of the perineum, they are entering the anal triangle region. So again, to define the anal triangle, it is the region that is bounded by sacrotuberous ligaments on both sides and an imaginary line that connects the ischial tuberosities. Anal triangle. Each anal triangle has two pockets or fossae on either side of the anus called the ischiorectal fossae and all of the fat's been removed in both of these specimens so you can see the nerve and muscular boundaries of the ischiorectal fossa. So pudendal nerve and its accompanying artery come through the lesser sciatic foramen and enter the ischiorectal fossa. The boundaries of the ischiorectal fossa are muscular. The medial wall is a thin sheet-like muscle called levator ani. You can see part of it right here. The lateral wall, difficult to see from the orientation of the camera, is the obturator internus muscle. Same muscle that I showed here, just a different portion of it. When I pull in this muscle, you can see maybe some movement down in that area. So the ischiorectal fossa is a wedge-shaped fossa by those two sloping muscles. Filled with fat, and the important structures coursing through the ischiorectal fossa are the branches of the pudendal nerve and the branches of the internal pudendal artery. There are three branches to the pudendal nerve. One is called the inferior rectal branch, which you see here making a course towards the anus and particularly the external anal sphincter. Another nerve is the perineal branch of the pudendal nerve, and that is this portion back here before it bifurcate. So right back here is the perineal branch. That's the second branch. The third branch of the pudendal nerve is the deepest, uh, usually a, a large nerve, the dorsal nerve of the penis, since we're looking at a male, or this would be the dorsal nerve of the clitoris in a female specimen. So those are the three branches of the pudendal nerve. You'll notice that the perineal branch, the middle branch that I pointed out of the pudendal nerve, splits into two terminal branches. One goes continues forward to the skin of the scrotum, and this is called the posterior scrotal branch, cutaneous, and the other is a muscular branch that goes to the bulbospongiosis, ischiocavernosis, and the urogenital diaphragm. 
the internal pudendal artery basically accompanies these branches and has named branches that simulate and follow the named branches of the nerve. The inferior rectal nerve is particularly vulnerable to removing perianal abscesses in this region. If this nerve is cut, it contributes to anal incontinence by denervating the external anal sphincter. Now the cadaver has been turned back to the supine position and we're looking at the dorsum of the shaft of the penis and the reason for doing that is to then want you to be able to identify the dorsal nerve of the penis that we had just seen a moment ago in the ischial rectal fossa. Here is the terminal distal portion of that nerve heading on to the dorsum of the penis. There's a right and a left dorsal nerve of the penis and they tend to be in terms of the anatomy or relationships in this area the lateral most structures on the shaft. Next in line would be a, an artery called the dorsal artery and then the deep dorsal vein is in the middle and then there's another artery, the dorsal artery before you get to the left dorsal nerve of the penis. Okay, now switching to the female external genitalia. The Mons pubis is anteriorly here and down deep through the fatty tissue would be the pubic symphysis. Labia majora on both sides here. If we pull back the labia majora, you can see folds that usually in the cadaver are collapsed or compressed more are the labia minora that bound the vestibule between the labia minora on the right and left sides. And then you look in this area within the vestibule, and this is the position of the glands of the clitoris. The vaginal orifice is down in this position, and the urethral opening is in between the two, right, approximately right there. Posteriorly, the labia minora come together again into the skin that you see here that marks the um, surface landmark for the perineal body in which episiotomies may be done midline through this area or medial lateral off to the side. With this specimen, uh, you can again see the vestibular area in here between labia minora here and here, and on the right side, the labia majora has been removed. The glands of the clitoris is right here, and when we fold this this way, we can see the continuity of the glands of the clitoris which is right here with the shaft or body of the clitoris, which makes almost a 90 degree turn down this way to become the right cruise, since we're looking at the right side of the clitoris. Okay? So the labia minora were, and majora were basically removed except for this flap right here on this side. The cruise in the female, like the male, is covered by a thin sheet-like muscle that's usually atrophied in the older specimens, which is called the ischiocavernosus muscle. So you usually see remnants, and underneath the muscle is the erectile tissue of the cruise of the clitoris. More towards the midline or centrally located, you'll see other bands of skeletal muscle fibers that run in, the, in a vertical direction, the way I'm showing with the pointer, and this is the bulbospongiosis muscle of the female covering the bulb of the vestibule. The position in between the bulb of the vestibule and the crus and pushing in deep in this direction would push against the urogenital diaphragm in the female. And the urogenital diaphragm in the female is identical to that of the male being a sheet of skeletal muscle pierced by urethra, the difference being it's also pierced by the vaginal canal. Now we're going to quickly run through the neurovascular structures on the female. So we have a, another specimen in a posterior dorsal view here, sacral, uh, tip of the sacrum, coccyx, ischial tuberosity, and the important sacral tuberous landmark, ligament right here, anus right here. So coming through the lesser sciatic foramen where the probe is would be the pudendal nerve that you can see coming through uh, in this tissue right down in through here. It almost immediately branches into different branches that are named same in male and female. Going towards the external anal sphincter or the levator ani would be inferior rectal nerves or blood vessels. Have a perineal branch 
that will give rise to posterior labial nerve as well as a deeper muscular branch to the bulbospongiosis and ischiocavernosis. And then the deepest nerve down in the ischiorectal fossa would be the dorsal nerve of the clitoris in the female. So those branches are, are similarly named to the male and the artery that you see in here is the internal pudendal artery which courses with the pudendal nerve and has similarly named branches. The vader ani is over here very atrophied and obturator internus is forming the lateral wall of the ischiorectal fossa. So we're going to take the dorsal nerve of the clitoris and just see its position in a, turning the specimen over onto the shaft or dorsum of the clitoris. Okay, and the female specimen turned uh, so we can look at the anterior structures. Pubic symphysis is in this area. This is the shaft or body of the clitoris. The glands is over underneath this flap of skin here. And the cruse goes down in this direction of the clitoris. So what we're going to do is pull down the body and the cura of the clitoris to expose more of the pubic symphysis and to be able to focus here on the large dorsal nerve of the clitoris on the right side and the left dorsal nerve of the clitoris right here. And again, the corresponding structures, a small artery and a midline vein are in the same orientation and positions as we just did in the male.